In the last video, we saw that hydrogen atoms can share their electrons because their shells are not full. Each hydrogen's electron can visit the others, and their shells can overlap. Both electrons are then owned by both atoms. This electron sharing forms a covalent bond between the hydrogen atoms. So they then become an H2 molecule. In this video, we'll look at whether other atoms can also share electrons and form bonds. First, we'll look at an oxygen atom. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8, which means it has 8 protons in its nucleus and 8 electrons in its two shells. Two electrons in the first shell and six in the second shell. The electrons in an atom's outer shell are called its valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, yet its outer shell could take up to eight. In other words, it could take another two electrons before it becomes full. Now let's bring a hydrogen atom onto the stage. Because oxygen's outer shell is not full, it can let hydrogen's electron visit it. Like before, hydrogen can also let oxygen's electron visit. Their shells overlap and the shared electrons form a covalent bond between the atoms. So it looks like the molecule OH will form. But can you spot something about oxygen that will let it form another bond? Oxygen's outer shell now has seven electrons, if you count the one from hydrogen, so it can take one more. But where from? Let's pretend that there are lots of hydrogen atoms around and another one comes along. This hydrogen atom's shell can now overlap with oxygen's shell and their electrons can be shared between them too. Another covalent bond is formed. Is that it? Can any more bonds be formed? No. Oxygen's outer shell is now full so it can't bond with any more atoms. The same is true of hydrogen. The structural formula for this molecule is HOH. Its molecular formula is H2O. The little 2 after the H means that there are two hydrogen atoms in the molecule. And because O doesn't have any number after it, we know that there is only one oxygen atom. This is water. When you drink a glass of water, you swallow about 10 trillion trillion of these molecules. Can you see that oxygen can make only two bonds? Not one, not three, only two. Why? It's because oxygen has two spaces in its outer shell. That is, it has six electrons, yet it could take up to eight. This allows electrons from two other atoms to share with it. In other words, it can form two bonds. Another way of looking at it is to remember our strange hotel idea. In our previous video, we likened atoms' electron shells to the floors on a strange hotel each floor with a particular number of single beds on it. The ground floor has two beds, the second floor has eight beds, the third floor also eight, and the fourth has eighteen, and so on. In oxygen's case, two electrons are booked into the first floor so it is full, while six electrons are booked into the second floor. 
This means that there are two spare beds on this floor, which is also its top floor. That means that this floor can take two more electron visitors from other hotels. This means that the number of bonds that an atom can make is equal to the number of so-called spare beds on its outer shell. Hydrogen has only one floor with two beds and one's already taken, so there is only one spare bed. Hydrogen can make one bond. One problem with the spare bed model is that it suggests that the electrons are not moving, and we know that they are fast. So don't take this model too literally. We will find that each kind of atom has its own particular bonding power. This number of bonds that an atom can make is called its valency. The valency of hydrogen is 1. The valency of oxygen is 2. Let's look at nitrogen, atomic number 7. It has 7 protons in its nucleus and 7 electrons in its two shells. 2 electrons in the first shell and 5 in the second shell. If it's got 5 valence electrons, how many so-called spare beds has it got? 3. It would take another 3 electrons to fill its outer shell and that tells us how many bonds it should be able to make. When we bring three hydrogen atoms onto the stage, you can see that this works. Sharing the three extra electrons fills up nitrogen's outer shell. Three covalent bonds are formed, and the molecule NH3 is made. This formula tells us that there's one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms in the molecule. We could have written it H3N, as this tells us the same thing, 3H and 1N. Later we will learn some rules about which symbol comes first. But to be honest, it's sometimes a bit higgledy-piggledy which way it's written. This molecule is usually written NH3. It's called ammonia, and it's a gas with a sharp, pungent odour. Whoa, be careful when you smell it. It dissolves in water really well, and it's a great ingredient in household cleaners, and also in fertilisers. It also forms part of bigger molecules, like amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. Can you see the similarity with the name? Now it's time for carbon, atomic number 6. Many scientists think that carbon is the most important atom for living things, and that's due to the way it makes bonds. It has 6 protons in its nucleus and 6 electrons in its two shells, 2 in the first shell and 4 in the second. If it's got 4 valence electrons, how many more does it need to share with in order to fill it up? 4. This is the number of bonds it can make. When we bring 4 hydrogen atoms onto the stage, you can see that they can all overlap with carbon to provide all the electrons that carbon needs. There are now 8 electrons in carbon's outer shell, if we count the shared ones from hydrogen. It makes the molecule methane, CH4, 
and it's the gas that your kitchen stove uses. It's also called natural gas. It doesn't smell, but the gas company puts some smelly gas in it so that you know if you've left your stove on accidentally. Of course it burns well and is also used as a fuel for cars and buses. Also some electricity generation plants use it instead of coal because it's much cleaner. We have seen how carbon, nitrogen and oxygen bond with a different number of hydrogens due to the different number of electrons in their outer shells. Carbon has four valence electrons, so it needs to share with four other electrons to fill its outer shell. And it can get these by overlapping with four hydrogen atoms and sharing with their electrons. Pretty clever, huh? Nitrogen has five valence electrons and needs to share with only three electrons to fill its outer shell. So it bonds with three hydrogens. Oxygen has six valence electrons and needs to share with two to fill up, so it bonds with two hydrogens. Carbon joins with hydrogen to make CH4, methane. Nitrogen joins to hydrogen to make NH3 ammonia, and oxygen bonds with hydrogen to make OH2, or better known as H2O, water. Three very important substances in the world. Try to remember the names and formulas of these three substances. Methane, ammonia, and, of course, water. Can you see a pattern here? As we go from left to right, the number of valence electrons goes up from 4 to 5 to 6. But the number of empty spaces in the outer shell goes down from 4 to 3 to 2. It's these last numbers that determine how many bonds are made. Can you apply your new knowledge to a new situation? Carbon, nitrogen and oxygen have atomic numbers 6, 7 and 8, so they must follow each other on the periodic table. What about fluorine, atomic number 9? How many valence electrons would it have? And how many empty spaces in its outer shell? How many hydrogens would bond to it? And what about neon, too? Remember, carbon makes four bonds, nitrogen three, and oxygen two. Does that pattern give you a clue about fluorine and neon? Here's another interesting question. Can you calculate how many electrons silicon has in its outer shell? It's in the third row, so it must have three shells. It has a total of 14 electrons, with two of them in the first shell and eight in the second shell. 
So how many left over in the third? How many extra electrons does silicon need to fill its outer shell? Can you see the striking similarity with carbon in the same group as silicon, but one row higher? Now look at the diagrams and you can see that silicon has four valence electrons, needs four electrons to fill its outer shell, and makes four bonds, just like carbon. What would the formula of the molecule made between silicon and hydrogen be? The molecule formed by combining silicon and hydrogen is called silane, and it's a colourless gas like methane. Can you work out its formula? Silane is an interesting substance. It's very explosive, and engineers think it might be a good fuel to run engines on Mars. Here's your last mission. Work out what kind of molecules would be made by combining hydrogen with phosphorus and with sulphur. These are similar molecules to the ones you would get using nitrogen and oxygen. And you might be able to ask your own questions about chlorine and argon. This video showed you the nuts and bolts of how covalent bonds are made and how many each kind of atom can make. The next video shows you how you can use these simple rules to build long and complex molecules like polymers and proteins.